Hey there, Sano Peace. How's it going? Let's go over supernumerary or multiple renal arteries. So here we have, this is an infant. So we have the aorta right here. One renal artery, two renal arteries, and three renal arteries. This is the kidney. Some edema here. So let's look at that same area with B flow. So here you have your aorta. Your aorta goes into the bifurcation here. So I'm approaching this kidney from the left side. So this would be the left kidney. This is the intrarenal vessels here. Aorta, since I'm approaching from the left side, this would be the left common iliac artery, right common iliac artery, going behind the left and right common iliac vein. This is the IVC, right renal vein, left renal vein, and here you have the left renal vein right there. Then you got the one renal artery here, another renal artery there, and the third one there. Here you see it more clearly, left renal artery one, two, and three, and the left renal vein right there. You can see the bifurcations and the confluence of the aorta and IVC very clearly. Remember that the left renal vein goes over the aorta and posterior to the superior mesenteric artery. Slight coronal view from the right. You can see the liver here, hepatic vein, IVC, and then you have your aorta. See, you have some aliasing here. In order to get that, you can go up on scale. And then you can see the one, two, and three renal vessels, the renal arteries. Now these vessels are going away from the transducer, so they're gonna be color encoded in blue. And then the left renal vein is coming, the flow is going towards the transducer, so it's gonna be encoded in red. Now the right renal artery only had one vessel, so or the right side only had one renal artery, so here you can see the kidney. Again, a little bit of free fluid. The patient had anasarca, which is fluid pretty much in all cavities and subcutaneous. So aorta here, right renal artery going into the hilum here. And with B-flow, you can see the artery here, a piece of the aorta, and the vein here, right renal vein. And you can see the B-flow showing the segmental renal arteries, the interlobar renal arteries. The arcuate would be around here, and then here's the edge of the kidney, which would have the interlobular arteries at the very edge. Now, there's also some calcifications in the kidney, which are calculi. Patients on furosemide or Lasix diuretics can develop kidney stones or renal calculi, especially in the neonatal period. Another technique to use for, for Doppler, for renal Dopplers, or any Doppler really, is power Doppler. Obviously, all encoded in red, the, the brighter or the more yellow, the higher the speed. But on the maps, there's color maps with the power Doppler that you can switch to make it look like color Doppler. So this is still power Doppler, but you get the directional flow as well. So much more sensitive, and you still get the blue and red encoded for direction. And here's a side by side of the right kidney showing the the B flow. And you can see one of the calcifications here, right here. And then you got the B flow there. You can definitely see the segmentals very clearly in uh, interlobar arcuates and then interlobular at the very edge. You can't really pick them up because they're so so tiny and such slow flow. So going back again to the multiple renal arteries or supernumerary renal arteries, very common finding. Here we have one that has two. It's about present in about 30% of the population. Now, multiple renal arteries are commonly seen, frequently seen in fetal ultrasounds because you're, you, know, you can see the entire abdomen in a coronal plane. So here you have the aorta and its bifurcation. And you see multiple renal arteries, two renal arteries on each side of the aorta. Now, the best way to see multiple renal arteries on anybody, children or adults, is to get the kidney in a coronal fashion. So you get the kidney in coronal, You'll be able to see, go through the hilum and also try to get the, the vessel, the aorta from the coronal plane. And you should see the vessels coming off from the aorta going into the, the kidney. Sometimes it's a little difficult to get the, to see the vessel in just grayscale. So once you put the color doppler, you should be able to pick up the vessels. Here's the artery and vein. Here you can lower the gain or increase the scale to reduce this blooming artifact of the color flow. And here's an example of the right renal artery coming off the aorta on the right, coronally. So here's your kidney and coronal. Here's the whole vessel. The aorta would be here. Sometimes the, the aorta won't fill in color because of the fact that it's it's at a you know at a 90 degree angle almost to the beam, so it won't fill up with color. But you can angle the transducer inferiorly or superiorly, and you might get that vessel to fill up, or increase the gain a little bit, or use power Doppler. Here's another example of the aorta in coronal, showing the banana peel sign. So here you got your right renal artery because you're coming from the right side and your left renal artery. So if you had multiple renal arteries, you'd be able to see it here. 
Whereas in the typical transverse plane where you have the aorta and the renal arteries, you're not going to be able to see if there's multiple renal arteries unless you sweep up and down, and it will be more difficult. Here you can see the, the right renal artery and the left renal artery, color-coded in blue because the flow is going away from the transducer. Here's the color with power Doppler, same thing. So here's with labeling, right renal artery, left renal artery, and remember the left renal vein always goes in between the aorta and SMA. Well, not always, usually. Very important for ruling on Nutcracker syndrome. And here's the labeling of the intrarenal arteries, so segmental, interlobar, argue, and then interlobular at the very end, and with B-flow. So again, the relevance of rust, uh, duplicate renal arteries are important. Patients can have any type of surgery, vascular interventions. Also, if the patient has maybe like an atrophic lower pole of the kidney, that could be from a renal artery that's supplying that lower pole that has stenosis. So it's very important to know about duplicate or supernumerary renal arteries and also its prevalence. You know, some studies say there's about 30% and you can have one, I mean, you can have two, three, four, up to five renal arteries. Here's an example from the New England Journal of Medicine of a donor who had five renal arteries. So one, two, three, four, and five. All right, so thanks for watching. I hope you all found this useful uh, for renal artery doppers. Uh, good luck in performing these exams. These are one of the more difficult exams. I absolutely enjoy doing them. Obviously, body habitus is always an issue. If there's uh, morbid obesity, these exams are very hard to perform. If the patients have conditions like emphysema or other conditions where they can't hold their breath for long periods of times, that is also a challenge. However, it is a very fun uh, exam to do if you know how to do them well. All right, take care.